Suave. Top of the morning, everybody. Welcome to Cowboys Trailers and Ranches. I'm Jimbo. Today, this gentleman right here is my special guest and co-host, Mr. Todd Fox. Hey, good morning. Thanks for inviting me on. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. We are in Marble Falls today, guys. Marble Falls, Texas. And we are in the Mark Fox Real Estate Investment Office in uh not doing any deals yet, but uh, who knows? By the end of the deal. <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> yeah. We both like selling. <laughs> so anyway, today's going to be fun, guys. Um, this, we're going to go back old school a little bit. Uh, this gentleman, Mr. Todd Fox, is an ex-PRCA steer wrestler from back in the day. And he's going to tell some stories. Most of them could be true. <laughs> uh, uh, <they> are. <laughs> so... It's going gonna, it's gonna to be fun. So we're going to get a little rodeo lesson today. And um, he's going to tell you all about uh, back in the day. And he's going to tell you about what he's got going on um, here uh, coming up. So um, first of all, sponsors, as always, um, want to thank Rodeo Rigs out of Montana. Ranch Texas, always in the house, representing <laughs> um, Laredo Conversions out of, out of uh, Fort Worth. Appreciate you all. Him, him Western Wear. Uh, Mr. Jay Potts, thank you, thank you, sir. The Cowboy Roundup uh, out of Shawnee, Wyoming. Miss Patty Franklin, always, always, thank you for uh, for what you're doing for that cause. And we'll uh, we'll probably touch a little bit on on that today um, with what Todd's got going on. Um, so always appreciate our sponsors, and as always, the Beaver Box, uh, our hat boxes. Uh, contact uh, uh, Cal Cowboy. Uh, Hattery, Miss uh, Miss Shorty, uh, Oklahoma City, for that. So appreciate all of our sponsors. Um, this is this is you guys keep us going. You guys keep us going every week. So this is number fourteen, by the way, which is pretty amazing. Um, fourteen episodes so far, and I am I am absolutely tickled. Love doing this, guys. So appreciate you. Um, for everybody that is reaching out to us every week for apparel, uh, we have got. We've got some some cool stuff coming. I just uh, I just agreed uh, yesterday we're going to partner up with Black Hills Embroidery out of Rapid City and be looking for our online store. Uh, we'll we'll get some more details uh, to you guys here in the next uh, week or two. Pay attention on social media. Uh, we're going to be we'll be putting it out there for an online store and how to how to go about getting apparel. Uh, I know, and I appreciate you guys reaching out to us on that. So, uh, with that, Mr. Fox, tell us, uh, tell us, tell us a little bit about yourself, sir. So, I, I was a rodeo cowboy. Went to the national finals ten times from from uh, 1986 to 1995, and was fortunate enough to have a have a pretty good career. And, and in 1995, and in I got my real estate license in 84. My dad made me have my real estate license before I took off to, to, to go rodeo. And, and man, that was a blessing. I, I did a little bit of stuff throughout my career. I didn't focus on anything, but I, I, I did in, in 1994, I sold a, I, I sold a 2200 acre ranch in uh Slidell, Texas. <laughs> Slidell. Yeah. We, 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 <laughs> we did the inventory. We did the inventory. We counted the we because they, they bought the cows and the hay and everything on the ranch. And we inventoried the ranch. The morning we were doing the inventory on the ranch, I was on the square in Decatur, Texas, on my way to, to go to the ranch. And that's the morning that Timothy McVeigh bombed the Oklahoma City building. Holy cow! That's wow! That's and, history. And the FBI building in Oklahoma City. Yeah. So that that was and and man that. But, but, but the thing about that sale was, golly, that sale changed everything. Like I, I was, I got passionate about rodeo and in 1995, I really wanted to be in the real estate business. I really didn't even want a rodeo, but <laughs> you're done. I, 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 done. I, mentally I was done. I, it, it was, and, and, and it was the first year that. I didn't have a good win. I didn't have a good winter. The winter rodeos were always incredible to me. I, I won Denver. I won. I won Fort Worth three times. I won San Antonio twice. I always had big winters, 
And in 95, I, I just wasn't mentally, I wasn't in the game and I didn't have a, I didn't win, I didn't win squad at the buildings. And I had resigned. I, I, I wasn't going to rodeo at, at, at Bandera that, that year in the spring, I told everybody I'm done. I, I, that was it. Well, Sid Steiner was a rookie that year. That was his very first year. And Sid and, 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 and Sid and, and, alfalfa just kept entering me <laughs> i wasn't i didn't even and i would go about half the time when they would enter me i would show up about half the time i wouldn't show up <laughs> i only went to in 95 i only went to nine rodeos the whole month of july which hell normally we we'd have gone to nine yeah. rodeos over the fourth of july right on and and when we got to cheyenne when we got to cheyenne that year i had sort of said that, well, if I have a big Cheyenne, maybe I'll go to go to the finals and go to my 10th NFR. Well, I, I didn't. I, 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 I made the short round at Cheyenne and won something. I don't remember what I won, but it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough to motivate me to go on. <laughs> how many years? So how many years did you go to NFR? 10. 10 years. So wow. 10 straight. Wow. So I, call, I, I go to the pay phone right after the short round's over. I go to the pay phone right behind the grandstands and I call home and I talked to my, my, my little girls at the time, they were, they were eight, and nine years old. And I told them I was coming home and I was done. done. We weren't going, they'd never not been to the finals their whole life. They didn't know anything but going to the finals, man. They start, they were playing ball and playing soccer. And we, I was pretty overzealous about <laughs> children's athletics. Right on. And and they both started having a fit, calling me a quitter and blah blah blah. <laughs> I, I I I told my 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 youngest daughter at the time, fair, and I said, "Well, I'll tell you what, you're if 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 we're going to do this, you're going with me." So, Clint, Clint, damn it, slick. He and I load up. We go to Marble Falls, and we were I wasn't entered anywhere. I was entered at Dodge City. It was the only thing I was entered at the next week. So we go to Dodge city and, and then I went on, I entered up after that, man, I got hot in, in August and I won everything we went to. I mean, I, I killed them the week of Colorado Springs, Sydney, Sydney Sox and Colorado Springs. I, I won like 10,000 that week. And by the time, by the time the, the standings came out, the next time the standings came out, I was in the top 10 and I'm, I'm hell. I just, I, I want everything. All right. And, and, and so that, man's that, legend. That, that took yeah. me, that took me to my, that took me to my 10th NFR. But as, as, as things happened, I tore my knee up and that was a blessing because I never entered another rodeo after the NFR 95. I've never entered another rodeo. 95 was your last. My, the NFR 95. Was the last rodeo I ever entered. I never entered another one. Wow, you was done. I you was done. Check, checked out. Yeah, and, and and then my real estate career started. And golly, it's been yeah. it's it's really been good. I've got my 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 that 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 little girl, that youngest girl, Farron. She's now my 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 business partner. My dad's retired. My dad retired seven or eight years ago, and 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 Farron became my partner. And my my oldest daughter is is. Megan and she and her husband are attorneys and their office is right behind ours. So it's family business. And well, she, Megan's, yeah, and Megan is in our business. She, she has, yeah. she's an agent in our office also. And, and my youngest daughter is Macy and, and she just graduated from the university of Texas. Good and stuff. Good and stuff. she's my, she's my partner on our, on our U S junior steer wrestling. <laughs> she helped me start that. Love. We've been, we're, 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 we're really fired up about that. That's awesome, dude. So, Hey, so I know a lot of people, <laughs> you said Sid Steiner. I know a lot of people <laughs> watching are familiar with the Steiners and the newest, the newest of the bunch is rocker. So tell us, tell us a little bit about going down the road with Sid. So Sid and I really didn't go. We really did not travel that much together. I mean, his, Sid and I are we we're, we're we're together all the time, and we've been 
together all the time ever since. <laughs> all right. But we really never did. We really never did rodeo that much together. I mean, because I didn't rodeo much that year, except I, I really didn't rodeo at all that year until after Cheyenne and, and and so he and I didn't really, we really never have rodeo together very much, but, okay. but we've been, we've, we've been together. We're, we, we, we do real estate deals together. We're, we're, I mean, we're best of, we're very best of friends. Right on. I mean, my, my rodeo partners were, were Byron Walker when I, when, 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 when I, I got oh, you first. You traveled with Byron then. Yes. When right. I got started, I, 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 I was with my, my rookie year, I was with Roy Duvall. One of the greatest experiences I've had in my whole life wow. was to be with Roy, and 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 then I got with Byron in '86. I, I got my card in, and I filled my permit at Vernon, and got my card maybe the first of June in 1985. I was I wanted to uh, get eligible for the pro tour that was going to happen in '86. '86, yep. I didn't get drafted, and and. I was with Roy that year. And then in 86, I got with Byron. I started with Byron the 4th of July and, and, and rodeo with Byron all of that year, made the finals. And man, Byron taught me how to rodeo. Byron taught me how to enter. Byron taught me how to rodeo, you know? So you got a lot, you got, you learn a lot between Roy and, and Byron. You, you and, and there was a lot of stuff I learned that was unnecessary. <laughs> Yep. More of that That's, from Byron than Roy. Yeah. <laughs> That's part of it. Yeah. It's a big part, some of that you can use and some of that you can't. <laughs> but but it's the memories, right? Oh, it's, God, it's the, we had a blast, the, man. It is the freaking memories. We had a blast. I mean, one thing about Rodeo with Byron, we ate at the very best places. We stayed in good places. And, 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 and the thing is, nobody – even to, in today's game, there's nobody knows how to enter better than Byron. Byron understands, Byron understands the rule book, and Byron understands strategy of where you go and how you go, and 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 the way it works. Byron understands that better than anyone, and he and he always has. Right on. All right. Well, you did. You traveled with some legends. I mean, oh yeah, we had, a, we had a great time. Wow, we had was, a great time. And that was and, back. That was back when. That's what back, I remember because that was my vintage. That's when steer wrestling was a freaking man's game. I mean, seriously. I mean, that that, that was one of the most predominant predominant, uh, uh, predominant sports there was. Yeah, no, and, 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 and it was great, and there was a great group of guys. Dan Cormier was always – was also with me for, for, for the majority of my career, man. I was with Dan and I. Dan and I, God, we were like brothers. We were together. Hell, we, we, we lived together more than we lived with our wives at that time, all right? <laughs> And and, yeah. and and I cannot leave out Slick. I cannot leave out Clint. Clint was with me. Clint drove for me. Clint's still with me. I still talk to Clint every Sunday. And and, awesome. and we're still in constant contact. That's so cool. That's good stuff. So hey, so when you were when you're growing up, everybody everybody has everybody's got their heroes, everybody's got their idols. Who did who was kind of your who's kind of your idol growing up? Well, so I, I would have to say that my, my dad, first and foremost, my dad is, is a hundred percent of the reason that I am the man that I am, you know, good or bad. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's, it's just both. both. One thing you learn about fatherhood, 37 years of fatherhood. Oh. The one thing I've learned is everything that your children do wrong is your fault and everything they do right is in spite of you. That's right. right. And there's no playbook. <laughs> and there is no playbook. There's no playbook. There is no playbook whatsoever. <laughs> All right, but and and golly, I've just got a whole bunch. Of, there's just you know Roy Duvall and Byron and 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 then when 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 I got out of the rodeo business, I got in the real estate business, and and I was so blessed and so fortunate to hook up with a man, Doug Barkley. Doug, Doug, Doug. I, I met Doug and my dad did stuff together when I was in, 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 in high school and I would see Doug and when, when, when I got hurt at the NFR, I, I had my knee surgery on January the 5th of, of 96 of 96. I was, I was sitting in my office when we were, on, when we were up closer to 1431, I was sitting in the office and 
I had my leg propped up on my desk and the, the, the water cooler and the water circle right around your knee three or four days after the surgery and Doug calls my office and he said, hey man, he said, I, I, I flew home on, 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 on the airplane and on the same flight your sister was on and she said, you're going to get in real estate business. And I said, yeah, no, I'm in a real estate business. He said, well, meet me in Stonewall. So my, my, I couldn't even drive. My dad drives me to Stonewall. <laughs> I had to sit in the back seat and put my leg through the <laughs> through the console of the, of the front seat. And and we went over and met Doug and talked to Doug. And gosh, Doug took me to, we, we went to, uh, we went to Fort Lauderdale. One of the first trips he took me on was, he said, you need to see what, what people that, that, that have money, what they what they want. You, we got, I've got to teach you what they're looking for. So we went down to Fort Lauderdale to the boat show, man. And, and Oh, that's an eye opener, dude. So like, oh, like I thought it was boats. I, I thought of, I, I grew up on <laughs> Lake Marble <laughs> Falls and Lake LBJ. And in those days we had fishing, fishing boats, boats. A, little, a ski boat, a ski natique or a master draft <laughs> was the most amazing thing in the whole world. And we get down there and, there was, was a big pimp in there. There was seven. There were seven of the of the hundred largest yachts in the world for sale down there, right on. and it was it, it was it was just an absolute eye opening experience. All right, and and man, Doug and I have done some really cool deals since. All right, so you've enjoyed you've enjoyed since you met since you got done since you called it quits bulldogging. You've enjoyed real estate a bunch. I mean, it's it's been your focal point. God, I love it. I I, I absolutely love every. That's I mean, cool to know. I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I, I've I've really never been to work a day in my life. I, I get up every morning, and I'm I'm I swear to live, I'm baby. fired up, ready to go every day when my boots hit That's the awesome. floor. My wife like my wife still laughs at me. All right, <laughs> like a little kid in the candy. Yeah, no, and and and, and hopefully I never do grow up. I, I I never want to retire. I hope I never have to retire. I, I'm 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 gonna fight it as long as I can. I'm key to life. I, I don't want to retire. Do. Yeah, I like what, what I do, man. That's awesome. I really like what I do. I get to I get to I get to make have an impact on people's lives. We get to we get to you change, change their lives. That's right. Yeah, when they buy and when they sell. You know, it's it's change it's just people. it's the coolest thing ever. It is. I agree. So what? Going back, what was your memory? What, what was your most memorable rodeo? I know you got. I know you got. At I've least, got. I've got, got a several. Bunch, I've got several. I, I everybody's would, got that one. They're like so. Yeah. So. <laughs> so of my ten trips to the NFR, I never had but one time that it was that it was close. And and well, well in '86, the first year I made the finals. The first year I made the finals, I was eight when the Cow Palace was over. The, the Cow Palace. When the Cow Palace was over, I was eighth in the world. But they still had two pro tour That's rodeos memories. left. We were at home. We were done, and the pro tour still had two left. So that I mean that 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 was anxiety. There was nothing I could do about that. I went from eighth to twelfth sitting at home after the season was over. All right, that's still a resentment. <laughs> <laughs> I got moved to the back row. Still and I, might be a I got, I got, I, got, I had to sit on the bucking shoots that year, oh. and 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 I was at home. All right, I was at home when they moved me, and and but the cool thing <laughs> about that, there was only four of us that made the finals that year that wasn't in the pro tour, and that was Oak, Roy Duvall, uh, Tom Ferguson, and myself. Jeez. That's 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 some company. That's pretty cool company, company. to be in. Yeah, that, anybody that doesn't know old school bulldoggers. Like our vintage, I'm telling you, uh, go look it up because those four names that he just well, named, they're all in the Hall of Fame, oh, and, that's, and and all of them arguably are the greatest cowboy, you know, absolutely the absolutely. greatest. All right, they are, they are. Yeah, there's no question. Stamp. Oh, 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 oh. In in my opinion, in just my opinion, Oak's the best. He's the best athlete that I ever watched in the arena. I'm, I'm a right. second that. He's second. the best athlete I ever watched in the arena. And and I didn't get to see Roy Duvall. That is, you know, it, I mean, when when I first came around in in 1984, Roy was still the hoss, all right. And he was a beast of a man. He was forty, he was forty one, two years old then, and he was still still still, he was still flipping him, right. still flipping him. Yeah, but he was a, I mean, he was a physical specimen. 
But I didn't, you know, I, I didn't get to see him when he was 30 years old. Right. Let me tell you, when when Oak was at his best, Oak could hit with his feet on the wrong side of the steer and just <laughs> jerk him up through himself and bam. It was it was it was it, it he could mm. physically do things that, that, that we couldn't do, that nobody else could do. Right. All right. right. Well, you, I'm going to tell you, you just said the, he kept the best company. So that says a lot about this man and how good he was because you had to be to run with that crowd. Oh, well, like that was that. cool. But, but back, to, back to my most memorable rodeo, all right? And I've got – I have two of them. But one of them, the most memorable, would have been in 1989. It was the only time I was ever in a real storm to make the finals. And, and we went to – we had two, I had two rodeos left. There was a hundred rodeo rule at that time. And I had two left and, and we were at, uh, Billings. I had the Billings and the cow palace left. Wow. So we get the Billings and like Dan, Dan was, Dan was 13th and, and, or Dan was maybe 14th and Ricky Huddleston was 15th or Ricky was 13th. Dan was 14th. I don't really remember how it was all stacked up, but Lee Laskowski and I were 16th and 17th. I do remember that. And we get, we get up there, Rod Lyman, God bless you. I'll never forget this. Rod Lyman let me ride his horse that night. I'd never ridden this horse before. And I had it set up that I was going to get to ride him before we got there. Dan rode him. And I think Lee rode him too. But, but, but we get, we get the billings that night. And we're sitting at the hotel. Dan and I are in our hotel room watching the World Series, the Oakland A's and the and the New York Giant of the San Francisco Giants, our, our first game of the World Series. We're sitting there watching, and the earthquake hits. Oh, and I'm talking about game. all of all of San Francisco is. I mean, the bridges are down, the streets are busted up, everything's tore up. And we're sitting there going, oh, my God. I mean, if all this is tore up in San Francisco, wow. that old concrete building at the Cal Palace <laughs> is gone. There's no way in hell that it's going to stand through this. So I wondered how that thing was standing for a long time anyway. <laughs> yeah, so we were like, hell, there's no chance that this is going to be it tonight. So Dan's like either 13th or 14th, something like that. Dan goes, I hope that sucker's on the ground. I hope this is the end of it. I'm like, well, you dirty <laughs> no bastard. More, no That's more. not what we want. We want no more pounds. Yeah, don't do that. Don't don't say that. I want it to be there. So we go out. We go out to to, to Billings. I mean, we go out to the rodeo, the Nile Rodeo. I've got to steer nobody's caught since Pueblo. The amount of time on him since Labor Day, and this is this is the end of October, and they they hadn't had a, they hadn't had a time on him. They didn't catch him. At, they didn't catch him at my lot. They didn't catch where, where, where else they'd been. They'd been no time on him everywhere. Well, and I don't remember if I won the first round or I won second the second round. But Lee Laskowski either wins. We win first and second. Lee and I won first and second in both go-rounds. And I don't remember which go-round who which won it. Was. Lee won the average and I won second the average. So when we leave, when we leave the building that night, Dan now is 16th, and Lee and I are 13th and 14th, and Ricky's 15th, all right? Dan's staying up all night watching CNN. I, I got my first night's sleep in a month. That's the first night I'd slept in a month. Man, I laid down. I hate to tell you, not only had that happened, but the – I had my house finance with Burnett Savings and Loan. And if you remember what happened in the late 80s, I had my notes set up where I paid because it was given that I was going to make the national finals every year for the rest of my life. You know, I bought that house. Yeah. Not how that works. I bought that house in 1985. <laughs> Hell, I was just going to. So I had my house set up with one annual payment a year after the finals. And I'll pay 10% of my, of my note and the interest. So that was an easy deal, right? right on. But <laughs> the the savings alone went went Once bankrupt. It, yep. They closed it. They my, my note was illegal. They called my note. I and and it, right after the finals, 
they I was either going to have to refinance my house, pay it off, or lose my house. I'll lose it. Let me tell you, I'm I'm in a jam. I have to do that. So I got to sleep that night. Well, we end up we go to the Cow Palace. Dan wins something at the Cow Palace. He makes the finals. Ricky went from 15th to 16th. So me, Dan, and Lee all made the finals. That was pretty memorable. Wow. That was a pretty memorable moment. Wow. And you bring up that Cow Palace. That was one of my – that was still – I mean, I know the facility was old. kind of. Oh, it was a fabulous that rodeo. Was still oh, it was such a great rodeo. Favorite, one of my favorites. When yeah, I went away, I'm like, And it was man. such and, – and the cool thing about the Cow Palace, the short round at the Cow Palace – was everybody's life was on the line. The short round at the Cow Palace was one of the greatest performances in all of rodeo because of all the drama. I mean, all these guys, you're going to make the finals. Right you're not going to make the finals. Right down the this wire. guy's got to win this in the go round. Blah, 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 blah. No, it was, it, was, it was one of the best performances of the entire year. Yeah. I, I, I absolutely. And I it was the only the time. time of the year that I was a – that I was a tourist. I used to love the cow palace. Uh, I used I used to go just to go. Yeah, so, no, I, I, I uh, loved it. I saw I saw I, I saw Cotton Rosser one one day one one year, and and I thought Cotton Rosser was an old man, right? He was probably <laughs> fifty years old, but I thought he was ancient. So we're at the cow palace, and and they they got after him for, with the hot shots, <laughs> and they were going to arrest Cotton. And and if if you ever been there, they're, 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 they had they had wood panels to load the stock in the back. So they were going to arrest Cotton. And Cotton said, and Cotton's telling them, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt those calves to hot shot them. And that lady with the Humane Society, she said, well, let me hot shot you. <laughs> so I can't wait for Cotton's reaction on that one. They hot shot <laughs> Cotton grabbed the fence. They hot shot him. And, and, and he said, see, I told you that didn't hurt. And, and that lady said, well, you got them big old heavy blue jeans on. He drops his pants. <laughs> that lady burns his leg up. And let me tell you, he just gritted his teeth. He said, it doesn't hurt a bit. Hurt a bit. <laughs> I ain't heard that story. That's Man, good. and I thought that's the toughest guy I ever saw in my life. And I thought mm. he was an ancient at the time. Mm. Isn't that mm. something? How, uh, how, how, man, that just kind of tingles me. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it was pretty cool. Uh, it was I've been hit by that one. I'm a big fan of electricity, but anyway. Hey, so uh, so tell us about your – I know you got some really cool stuff happening, exciting, the youth stuff going on. So we're having the U.S. Junior Steer Wrestling. This is our third year to have this U.S. Junior Steer Wrestling. The first year we had it in Wimberley, and and, and we're having the, the, the Leon Barley – the Leon Barley Cowboy Reunion. And, and Leon was also extremely important all during my rodeo career. Leon actually hates for me in the first match I ever had against Tommy Gailey down at Jason Cooper's right on the banks of Barton Creek. All right. And, and, and anytime I needed Leon throughout my career to go haze for me, to do whatever Leon would go with me and he would haze for me when, when, when I, when I, when, when I quit rodeoing, he gave me, he gave me the listing on his ranch, which is now the Bowerland. In Austin, they call it the Bowerly Ranch. It's a big subdivision, 495 acres on Slaughter Creek. And 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 I got his sister, Jimmy, Jimmy and Joyce's ranch. It was right behind them. And I ended up selling the, the, the Picard place and, and John Tabor's place. He Leon, the, that listing Leon gave me got me started in the real estate business. Huh. So yeah. so we're we're and Leon didn't want to have how this steer wrestling got started was. Leon did not want to have a funeral, told his wife, Cindy, that no funeral, no funeral. So Byron and Cindy were talking one day and, and Cindy told him no funeral. And Byron said, well, let's have a steer wrestling. Let's have a junior <laughs> steer wrestling. So we didn't have a funeral, but this is going to be our third steer wrestling in his honor. All right. <laughs> And cowboy reunion. Oh God! Yeah. God. <laughs> so be careful. You know, you got you got to be more. Shit right you have there. to be more specific whenever you make demands. <laughs> Let's have a bulldog instead. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. So, so this this junior steer wrestling, the the, the man, we 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 having a a a, a three head super series qualifier, whatever you want to call it. It's 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 three go rounds. 
we take we take the top four money winners okay. out of the three go rounds, and then they come back into this year. We're having a rodeo performance this year. We're going to be live on the Cowboy Channel. Last year it was Way cool, man. Last That's year awesome. it was it was on the app and it was tape delayed because we edited it and created a program. I didn't know how to do. We didn't know how to do what we're going to do this year. This year we're actually having a a, a live rodeo performance. Wait, we're gonna we're we're, we're gonna have a, a a big mutton busting. <laughs> awesome. I'm letting everybody come. Awesome. We're bringing forty sheep. That's gonna, gonna bring in a lot more. We're gonna have eighty. Yeah. We're gonna have eighty mutton busters. Damn. Holy crap. If they, I mean, we don't know if we'll get that many, but we're gonna allow up to eighty mutton busters. We're gonna have a we're gonna have a goat roping. <laughs> we're gonna have a goat roping. All right, and and we're gonna take the the the, the top four. Money winners in the steer wrestling. We're going to bring the top 10 out of the mutton busting. And we're going to take the top 10 nice. out of the goat roping into a performance. Hmm. All right. Okay. And, and, and we, we're, it's going to be live on the Cowboy Channel. Justin McKee is going to come be our announcer for the performance. Uh, uh, Rope Myers is going to do our color. Right on. And, and uh, Amy Wilson is going to do our interviews. In the morning in the qualifier, Amy's going to be our announcer, and Rope is going to do our color. And the theory behind that is Rope is going to try to teach Amy how to steer wrestle, all right, and technically how the steer wrestling works. I mean, because think about this. When did the NFL become popular? When the NFL really became popular is when John Madden taught the mothers and the daughters and the sisters the sport, and the girlfriends, the yeah. how football worked, how to watch football. All right. So the whole idea behind this qualifier that morning that will be live on the app, be sure and buy your app so you can watch it. Right on. All right. So the, the idea behind that is, is rather than our mothers and our wives and our sisters and our girlfriends tolerating the steer wrestling. <laughs> Or just not tolerating and staying at home. Maybe they'll, maybe they, maybe you know, maybe they'll learn to actually enjoy it. All right, but and I, and our matches. I like that analogy. That's good. So 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 the the when when the four guys come back into the into the performance, we're gonna the, when the four guys come back into the performance, those are gonna be four. They're gonna be forehead matches, but they're gonna be different than any forehead matches I've seen. So they're gonna all be in. I'm not a huge fan of tournament rodeo, but tournament rodeo is where we are. Learning, learning the the the, the idea behind match match play steer wrestling was was the first guy that made a mistake. He was beat, and 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 it taught you and prepared you for being in the short rounds. When the short rounds blew apart, all you had to do was go be five flat, make a good run, and win first. All right, that 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 era is. Over in rodeo, whether I, I don't like it, but they, they've eliminated yeah, it. All right? Right. So, so what we're doing here is it's going to be a forehead matches. It, they're going to be four one headers. You're going to, everybody will run two, just like in a normal match. And then you're going to, you're going to trade the, You're going to trade steers and you're going to run the same two gotcha. that the yep. first guy run. The difference is it's going to be like match playing golf. It's one down two down, three down match. And and if it's tied, you know, because even if you have the best two steers in the first round, mm -hmm. the other guy's going to have the best two steers in the next, next round. Right. He's got an opportunity to at least tie. All right? And and if they tie, then the the, the fifth steer will truly be a shootout. It'll be a throwdown. Yeah. It'll be a shootout. We're yeah. going to have two steers in the back as e equally matched as we can, and it's just going to be a one-header on those two steers to see who, who That's advances. Cool concept, man. That's cool. Concept. All right. I like that. So we've also got the Texas Pink Jamboree, which is going to be a part of this deal. And we've got music starting at noon. We, we I, I anticipate that our qualifier is going to start at 10 o'clock in the morning. We'll be, we should be through by noon. We've got music starting at noon. And then at 345, Gary P. Nunn comes on. Boom. Right before our performance. And and then we're gonna have our performance after after the the final match is over. Also, we have Tomas Gasiano coming on, who's four times contract act personnel of the year. Yep. 
greatest charo in in the business. He's going to come on and he's going to he's going to perform for us. So it's going to be a complete performance. Jesse Robb Jr., who who co-writes with Cody Johnson and 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 opens for Cody Johnson. That got some hitters. All of his big shows. Cody is our headliner after the rodeo. Tony is? No, Jesse is. Yes, Jesse yes. Robb Jr. is. Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember a whole lot about rodeo, but the rodeo dance, I still know how to do. <laughs> I'm not near as good a hand Woo! at it. I'm not think, near as good a hand at it as a horse. That's the memories that come but, out. <laughs> but I love the rodeo dance, all right? So, hey, that's October. October the 8th. Right. October it's the 8th. day before Columbus Day, and it's going to be in Granite Shoals, Texas, at Quarry Park. <sighs> Granite and, Shoals. And, I've talked about that before, y'all. And, that's a cool little spot. Yeah, I know. And, 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 and you can come get your uh, RBVO, however you say that, VRBO. VRBO. Yes, yeah, VRBO. <laughs> Oh, like LBJ, or where you know we got hotels in Marble Falls. It's a great area, guys. It's, it's gonna be. Area. I mean, it's it's, it's a good spot. It's gonna be a great time, man. I, I'm I'm so excited about it. Check us out. Passion, on, passion. Yeah, check us out on 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 Instagram and TikTok and 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 uh, Facebook. It's at usjuniorsw.com at usjuniorsteerwrestling.com. So it's also 17, 18, and 19 year old. Yeah, it's they, they have to be up. 18. They have to be 18 okay. when when on January the first. Okay. It's an Oatberry and it is an Oatberry qualifier to go to the to national finals to win his 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 junior world championship. And and man, Oat that that's something Oat has done an immaculate job. Without Oat, none of this would have been possible. Oat uh, Oat just did he's he's done unbelievable i mean and, and the quality of these kids i mean you touched on something bragging about my my generation of steer wrestlers yep. and of course i'm biased and partial just like everybody else but and but the thing is the event has changed the cattle have changed yep. the availability of fresh steers is not the way it was when we rodeoed I, it is disappointing that they don't run fresh steers anymore that 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 you know, they've done what they've done to Cheyenne is sickening. All right. Yeah, there's a lot of them. <laughs> but 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 you know, there's 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 reasonings for that. All right, and and, and a lot of that is because the cattle aren't available. But I I, I watched the, the 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 girls breakaway roping at Clovis, California, and it and it, at, at Salinas and at Cheyenne and. I, I guys, I'm picking on y'all, but it's just a shame that the girls have got the most cowboy event <laughs> at those rodeos. All right. But 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 the thing is, the depth of the steer wrestling today is much, much deeper than it was any other time in history. All right. Even though the event's different, it is different. All right. These guys are incredible athletes. They are athletes. They 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 bulldog so good, it's unbelievable. You come watch these boys that are 18, 17, 18, 19 years old. That that wasn't that wasn't going on no. in, in our era. True. I mean, I never bulldogged. I times. never I never even ran a steer till I got to college, my freshman year in college. That's Sid calling right now. <laughs> But he's, here, he's listening. Yeah. <laughs> ah, that's awesome. But and and he'll disagree with me on all this. But, <laughs> of course. And Byron's gonna have us in. If Byron's not, if Byron, we <laughs> know is not watching, or my phone would be blowing up. Oh, that's awesome. But anyway, these guys are incredible. I mean, you watch Tyler Wagon's back, mm. and I, I'm not leaving. Kids I don't want to leave man. any no, no, no. anybody I, I out. Will Loomis, uh, 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 Tiny. Uh, I mean. Those guys are, 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 are Ty Erickson. Uh, I mean, those guys are all unbelievable. Stetson Jordanson. I mean, all, all those boys are, are I mean, they're, they're, they win. Said it, they're athletes. Yeah, they, they, win, athletes. In, they athletes. win in any generation. That's right. There, there's not a generation they wouldn't have won in. If, you know, if it's it's not the same contest. And, and mm -hmm. if the contests were the same, they'd still be the, they'd still be the champions and they'd still be the winners. 
I mean, the guys are the guys are unbelievable. Yeah, and they're in incredible shape. I mean, oh, it's it's they're, amazing. They're, fine, they're finely tuned athletes now. Oh, they're, which they're amazing. Back in the day, guess what? They were just, yeah, we were in awful good shape too. I'm not. Oh, they were, but I'm just, I mean, we were in great it's shape it's too. Different. All right, it's but it's just a different deal. Yeah, and 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 I, 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 there. I mean, anyway, we could pick apart all of us. You know, the one thing that I do have to say the difference between their generation and our generation. They're on TV every night. Yeah, We weren't on TV very often. <laughs> and when I talk to everybody in my generation, they forget that they didn't always make good runs either. <laughs> right? We hadn't made a bad run in a really long time. <laughs> and hadn't had a cold streak in a really long time. All right? And, and it's not documented like these guys are documented. It's changed. It has so changed. back to, my, back, back to, the, to U.S. Junior Steer Wrestling, all right, young guys that are that are interested in, in, in steer wrestling that, that are too young to be at this event. Rope Myers, Rope holds the average, is the is the, the record for the average at the NFR, 37.2 seconds. He was 3.7 seconds average, 3.7 seconds a steer That's on 10 head. All just, right. And Rope's dad, Butch, Butch, Butch won the I average twice. He he held the record at whatever it was. He was fifty two years old. He beat us. One he won the average. I was there. I was one of the ones that he beat. He beat us when he's fifty two years old. And Butch is not in the Hall of Fame, and that's absolutely criminal. Yeah, they ought to close the Hall of Fame down until he gets put in the Hall of Fame. He belongs there. He's had as big an impact on the steer wrestling event as anybody has. I would say that no one's had a bigger impact as far as teaching people how to steer wrestle for the, 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 the tools that they use, the steer saver, all that stuff. Butch was, Butch was incredible. He's world's champion. Butch Myers needs to be in the Hall of Fame. Right on. Agreed. Agreed. So I got one thing for you. So right. we ask, I ask everybody, I ask everybody now, it's been kind of our go-to question. So if you were to pick one thing in our industry, in our Western industry, that you would change to keep it Western, what would it be? It's very simple what I would do. <laughs> All right. Throw it. So the, the number one thing that needs to happen is the, 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 the NFR needs to be open for bids to the whole world. All right. And, 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 the, the same people have had the same tickets at the national finals since I went in 1986. In 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 2020, the 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 the, the they couldn't have the finals in Vegas. They moved it to they moved it to Arlington. They sold it out in minutes. They, it was open minutes, three different days, and it sold out in minutes. All right. I, I know I know more people that went and saw the NFR for the first time in their life. In, in Arlington than ever, ever in my life, all right? There was the, the, the tickets. I don't know if anybody's tried to buy tickets on the secondary oh. market. Tickets at the NFR now are seven, 800 apiece yeah. at, on the secondary market to get good tickets. I mean, we need to be in a 40,000-seat arena. And, and the thing is, to grow the sport, I mean, anyway, I can go on and on and on about this. I mean, the state of Nevada's got two companies in, 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 in the Fortune 500 companies, Texas is number one with 53. Houston's got 22 all by itself. I mean, if you move Las Vegas to the Dallas Metroplex, it'd be yeah. the sixth largest city yep. in the Metroplex. The buying power for, for, for Las Vegas or Nevada is nothing in compared to Texas. And don't forget about don't forget about Atlanta, Georgia, Phoenix, Arizona. There's all kinds of places that would do that. And why they don't open that up for bids, I have no idea. They don't have, I don't, I'm not aware of a Fortune 500 company that the PRCA has as a, as a national sponsor. Uh, uh, maybe the MGM, they're not a national sponsor, but they do, they do sponsor the, the, something at the NFR, a little something. But you also get charged to go into their casinos, to so go into their bars yep. and watch the rodeo. And the Cowboys are getting paid what they're getting paid ticket sales. You've got millions of square feet of, of, of 
Cowboy Christmas all over Las Vegas. Cowboys aren't getting Cowboys aren't getting paid for that. that. They if 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 Major League Baseball, the NFL, the NBA, the NHL, if any of those people were having that convention, you could bet they would get be getting paid a percentage of the gross receipts that was happening all over Las Vegas. I, I, I actually bought furniture myself. I bought furniture from a from a guy that was a vendor in Las Vegas. And when when we went to his his showroom about getting after the rodeo was over, we were we were in there and we were talking about and I'm walking over there looking and the guy says out loud, he goes, Well, the dumbest thing they could ever do was move the would, would be to move the, the rodeo out of Las Vegas. And my wife was like, Heard that. My wife said, My God, I wanted to buy some of your furniture. <laughs> She said you couldn't have brought up a worse, yeah, a right. worse. Th- and you know what? We can go on and on. No, but the thing is, I mean, no, I mean, the thing is, that, situation. that should grow. That would grow. There's nothing in the world would grow the sport of rodeo more than to allow to, 20, move, to move it. To move it. To move I mean, it. there's a reason that the NBA moves around. There's a reason yeah. that the NCAA moves around. The Super Bowl. Everybody moves around. The the all the the, with the exception of the Masters, all the majors in golf. And, and 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 including including the the, the, the British venues. Open, they all move around because because of that. It's to, it's to grow the sport. Yeah. All right. I mean, they need Good to open, they need to open that thing up. Bring new sponsors in. Bring new blood in. Bring new interest in. I mean, the the rural America is the most underserved community in the United States. I mean, technologically, we'll all the time. technologically. And man, I'm in the group. We're all behind. All right. Thank God I've got children that are smarter than me. All right. <laughs> or I'd be done. <laughs> yeah. So that was a good point. And, it, and and that's a conversation we can talk about for days, for hours, because I think everybody's got their own opinion on it. And just to take a second, go back when it went to Fort Worth for a brief Are minute. You? I mean, there was a lot of people that loved it. A lot of people that didn't. But what it did bring is something new, right? Something new other than Las Vegas, Nevada. Thomas so, and so, so what, 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 what didn't they like? The number one thing that the, the number one complaint is, <clears throat> is that they, they, it was the energy, the energy, the energy, the energy. Well, because of COVID, they could only sell whatever. Still, it's the largest crowd that ever saw the NFR. Yeah, and the big most money they know that. Pro Cowboys rodeo, love the arena. Cowboys most, love the arena. Most most money pro rodeos ever made off the national finals. All right, and 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 they didn't have any time to get set up for it, no, so they didn't no. have an opportunity because of COVID. They couldn't set up the cowboy Christmases and 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 all that stuff. Excuse me. They didn't have time to prepare and get ready no, for it. They did. All right, you give. You, let me tell you, you give Phoenix two years to get ready for it. You give Atlanta two years to get ready for it. You give Dallas two Dallas, years to get used. Yeah. You give Houston two years to get used, ready for it. San Antonio. Let me tell you something. You would have, if they can handle the Super Bowls, true. That's they can point. handle the National. That's a Final. good point. That's a good point. They can handle the NFR. Good point. They can handle World Series, Super Bowls, all that. They, can, I mean, anyway. Yeah. Once again, my, all my can... soapbox. <laughs> We could talk about this for days, and you know what? I want to appreciate this guy so much. Yeah, thank, thank you for having me. He's he's been uh, he's been a treat. He has been, and and I'm gonna tell you, he's going back to old school, old school bulldogging, which I near and dear to my heart. So, remember October eighth, come out and check his bulldogging out. It's a it's a it's a great cause, and I think it's gonna be a great event. So. Yeah, and, and 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 be sure and buy be sure and buy the Cowboy Channel app, so you can. Watch that qualifier. The qualifier, Super Series, whatever you want to call it, is going to be amazing. I can't wait to see Amy Wilson as our announcer. We need to have women be the announcers. It's time for that. Long overdue. They need to be the primary announcers. All right? They do a hell of a job. They do a great job, Amy. I mean, that whole – that Hats off. Katie and Amy and Janie, they're, 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 they do a great job. All right? And and they need to be they need to be front and center doing the rodeos themselves. Right on, right on. Once again, appreciate you, man. Be looking for this guy. 
keep his name keep his name under your hat todd fox and october 8th remember that we're gonna sign off we're gonna call it a day so let her buck keep it western